All right, hello again, Art 112 students. I'm now gonna go over just a little kind of demo overview of some resources that are available for discussion board two. And what we're gonna do to submit for that and then eventually into our discussion board three. Two is gonna be our usual rough draft upload. Discussion board three is going to be an in progress submission. So we're gonna click on to discussion board two and we're gonna review some of the resources that we have here. Okay, so. There's gonna, we're gonna begin with some zine resources, okay? For your rough draft, you are not gonna start your zine just yet. You are actually gonna just submit one more reiteration of a storyboard like we did for our discussion board number one based off my feedback. So if you haven't listened to my feedback yet for your rough draft, please do so. Okay, so going back to, I, but I would want you to do though is spend some time looking at these zine resources. You're going to want to get a sense of what kind of zine you want to create. A good way to start is to go to this link, which is an overview of zine formats. It's going to give you just a general idea of different zines, okay, and what they look like. And you don't have to use these at all, okay? It's just a beginning point to give you a sense of what you might like, okay? And also look back at, you know, my presentation and the past student examples as well. So then we're going to get more specific into resources. So if you want to go with the good old traditional eight page zine, which is from one large rectangular piece of paper, you can use any rectangular piece of paper. It doesn't have to be a piece of computer paper. And I wouldn't even recommend using a piece of computer paper because I think it's going to be too small to work in. You can. I'm not against it, but you might want to go bigger. You might want to choose the rectangular piece of drawing paper you have from your drawing paper pad or cut that down with your X-Acto knife but it has to be in a rectangle for this to work. So keep that in mind. And there is a step-by-step -step image tutorial for how to do this um, that kind of goes through, okay, telling you what you're gonna need. Yeah, you got your knife, you got your, you can cut on the back of your drawing board of your big 18 by 24 drawing board or your uh, 11 by 14 drawing board. And it's gonna tell you exactly what to do step-by-step -step to create the zine. Or if you're like me and you do better with the video, which a lot of students tend to like videos better. Um, sorry, I just opened up the wrong thing. Then you might wanna watch this video tutorial that's listed here as well. And I also wanna show you this wiki. Here it is. Okay, sorry, I was pausing because I couldn't find it. How to make a zine. This is gonna be another example of a visual tutorial because I, I find that with demos, um, some students will look at a demo and get it right away while others like cannot figure it out and they need a second, like a second sort of way of looking at it. So this is just another nice way of looking at it. Okay. All right, going back. There is also the staple bound zine where you're going to take paper and fold it and sort of stack it and then you're going to bind it in the middle where these little dotted lines are. This is just a nice little visual that gives you an example of what that looks like. You know, you obviously can use less than this. You could, you know, you only have a minimum of five. So you do have to do a little math here to figure out how many pages you're gonna want. But again, this is just a planning process to get a sense of what kind of format we wanna use. So there is some step-by-step -step guides and video tutorials here on how to use a stapler to bind your zine, which is a pretty simple way to do it. And then there's some tutorials here on how to stitch. So you'd be stitching this instead of stapling it. And there's three different ways to do it. So there's a really more simple pamphlet bound way. There's a what's called a four hold stab stitch. These are the two easiest. So if you are interested in something, if you have access to a needle and thread and you have um, scissors, then you can do this and you just need to poke some holes. It's really simple. It, and this is also a really nice um, video because it shows you the whole step-by-step so step process and how you can use a ruler. And then it's gonna show you how to stab holes into your paper with like anything that you have that's sharp. And then she shows you how to stitch it, okay? Um, oh, I wanna point out too, on the staple one, we go back to the staple. There's a really great helpful one, here it is, that talks about scoring. So when you are, folding your zines, it's really helpful to score the edge of the paper first, especially if you're using something thick like cardstock or bristle board. So in this staple one, and this also applies if you're going to sew it. In this staple one, sorry, there's an ad, you'll be able to see how to um, 
do this. I'm going to kind of just show you really quick, though, because I want you to get a sense of what that means. So give me one second to find it. So she is scoring it now. One minute. By using her X-Acto knife really softly. That helps to fold the paper easier. You don't want to do it too hard or you're going to cut your paper. So this isn't going to work for copy paper. It's only going to work for something a little bit thicker. Okay. But that was just something I wanted to point out that students have found helpful in the past. Okay. So going back to the stitched ones, there's a few different options for stitching. And lastly, there is an option for gluing. Okay. So this is kind of a fun one that you just do with a piece of glue. So it's pretty easy. All right, so why did I introduce you all of that, even though you're not starting your zine yet? Well, I want you to at least start to think about what your zine is going to look like. We're going to we're in the planning period right now. But for this rough draft, let's go down the different things I want you to do. Review the demo video and the zine resources above, which we just did in the video. Read over my feedback regarding your discussion board number one submission, and you can work from a design that you completed for your discussion board one or design something new for your rough draft. As long as they follow the project objectives, you can change things as much as you'd like. Your rough draft only needs to be another rough storyboard sketch, like I said before. It does not need to be in the zine format yet. It's just going to be you kind of restructuring a final storyboard. And also keep in mind, as usual, your rough draft does not have to look exactly like your final. This is a stepping stone to our ideas. So you might change it when you get into your final, and that's totally okay. All right, so you're going to play around within that, within this storyboard, this sort of rough draft, play around with using the medium that you think you might want to use, right? And those mediums are all listed on that project sheet we talked about, but it can be anything that's black and white or within the grayscale. So it can be a graphite pencil, like those drawing pencils we purchased, can be ink, so Sharpie or pen, can even be paint if you want to get real crazy. And then you also can practice that 5% of color as well. Um, okay, so again, this is a rough draft. Don't spend too much time on it. It can be a more rough sketch, but definitely play around with your medium. Part two of this assignment is to photograph your rough draft and upload it to the discussion board for my feedback to get started for your final. Um, write a two paragraph, paragraph response that answers the following, okay? So I want you to, with your submission, type up this. I want you to explain me your story. I wanna know what your story is and I wanna know how your shapes relate to your story. Okay, describe how the shapes within the story are conveying the meaning of your narrative. I want you to explain your ideas for your zine format. So this is not happened yet. It just, it's just a, a, a you typing the information to me based off of all those resources I just showed you. What are you going to use? Are you going to use the folded version? Are you going to stitch it? Are you going to glue it? Are you not sure? You want some advice? How big will your zine be? What kind of paper are you going to use? Will you connect together with what kind of bounding material? This is the planning process so that you can get my feedback one last time before you start your final. The third thing I want you to type up is to take, or what I want you to do thirdly, not type it up, I want you to take a look at other students' rough drafts after they post it here, because I think it's really nice to see what other people are doing, can give you some inspiration and give you some ideas moving forward. Okay, I just wanna go back really quick to discussion board three, because we're gonna be doing that next, and that's gonna be an in-progress submission. And basically, you're going to need to have by um, 928, you're going to need to have or whatever date is listed here, this date might be different for other classes. So I didn't mean to say 928, any date that's posted here. <laughs> um, you are going to have to have 50% of your non objective narrative composition done. And this is going to be the actual zine. So this is a week's time, there's plenty of time to get this going. Don't stress, I just want you to know that's coming. And really, all you're going to have to do is answer a few questions here as well. Okay, that's it for now. Always reach out if you have any questions. Remember that my office hours are on Mondays. You can always see me in person if you want in-person feedback, or you can email me, or we can do a video chat. There's lots of ways to get feedback. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye.